What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, Luna and Alice died again, unfortunately, and we were posed with the question of, in the AB room, do we betray or do we ally with Clover? The complicating factor being that, well, we know that Phi and Dio are probably going to pick Betray and get to 9 BP. And so we ended up choosing, or rather I ended up choosing Betray and feeling really bad about it, but really making the argument that it's the only rational thing to do here. Because there's no motive for Phi and Dio to do anything other than Betray as well. So let's see how everybody else voted. The door ground open and I stepped out. All around me, other AB rooms were disgorging their occupants. Micah. What a word. Wait. Dio. Dio. Fi's voice echoed. Fi's voice echoed hollowly across the room. I followed her eyes to the number nine door. And to Dio. Is Dio literally making like a mad dash for the number nine door? Dio. No. I shook my head. I had to get to that door. What are you doing, Dio? No, he's going to try and open it. Darn right I am. But the results... <laughs> like I need to wait for that. Ah. Uh... Dio's BP was at 6. His opponent was Luna, and she is, well, she is as she is. Her vote would have defaulted to Ally. All he had to do was pick Betray. And he'd have 9 points, right? Excellent answer. I hope you remember to show your work. But... Phi was Dio's partner. And her BP was the same as Dio's. That means she has 9 now as well. Exactly. It was 9 the moment we stepped out of the AV room. Why? Why didn't you stop Dio from choosing Betray? You got the wrong idea, old man. This wasn't just my decision. We both decided to vote this way. Is that true? Yeah. I didn't have a choice. You didn't? Because of you, Luna's BP is minus one. So? What, she's going to die again? Zero can pump all the poison he wants into her, it's not going to make a difference now. Pretty gruesome way to put it. Besides, her bracelet's already fallen off. You... Then why did you try and stop Dio, Phi? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering as well. I believe I heard you cry out wait as he headed toward the number 9 door. I think the idea is she wanted him to wait so that other people could figure out their results, namely Sigma, and see if they could come along as well. Are you planning to wait for the rest of us? Did you just want to get your BP up to 9 to reduce your own risk? Sorry, but no. The only reason I stopped Dio is because I needed to know what someone else voted. Exactly. Someone else? But that would be... Here we go. <clears throat> Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. 
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, unexpected. Or not unexpected. Ooh, and so we do betray Clover successfully. And also snag nine points. Feel bad about it? But I still, I can't justify picking anything else. Knowing that fine deal we're going to pick Betray. Feel bad about it, but it makes sense. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. The real thing I was curious about was what K would do. Um, well, I mean Clover, obviously, but, but K was definitely a question mark. Because K could have chosen Betray and gotten 9 points as well, but K decided not to do so. That... No. You betrayed me, Sigma. And again, this is the first time we've actually gotten to an AV room without knowing what the results were for Ally or Betray and choosing Betray for the first time. Why? I... What other choice did I have? To keep your promise, you jerk! You liar! You're a coward! You don't care about anybody but yourself! All you wanted was to get out of here! I should have known the game wouldn't have made it e any easier. <laughs> I already felt bad choosing Betray. And the game's like, oh yeah, you thought you felt bad about choosing Betray? Now you really feel bad. <laughs> Getting worse. <laughs> You're horrible, I hate you! Wait a minute. Just listen to me for a second. Whatever I did, Dio and Phi were going to get 9 BP. The door would have been opened whether I had 9 points or not. So? All that means is that you picked Betray because you didn't want to get left behind. No, that's not it. How could we know if they would go get help once they escaped? I can trust Phi, but Dio is different. I didn't know what Dio might do to Phi after they went through the door. What if he turned out to be Zero Senior? So I figured that if they were going to escape anyway, I should go with them and make sure they... Yeah, I don't know if I buy it, let alone Clover's gonna buy it. Is that it? Is that your excuse? Liar. Liar. You're just like Dio. Oof. You're a coward. I think of all this string of insults, being just like Dio is really, really what hits the most. Whatever. Just fine. I was stupid to trust you. Clover, I... I heard a clang and turned. I'm really curious to see what happens now. Does, is this timeline going to continue after we exit the Nine Door? Are we going to be attacked and that's why it's potentially a game over ending? Or what? Sorry. I went ahead and opened it. I could have plenty of time to watch soaps on the outside, so I didn't feel like I needed to stick around to see how this little drama played out. Dio! 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 Dio. Alright, lady and gentlemen, shall we? Why so serious? This really isn't the time for hesitation. You both crossed a line you weren't supposed to cross. You betrayed your friends. Yikers. But if that doesn't describe this timeline, I don't know what does. Am I right? I'm right. But you didn't have a choice, did you? You had to survive. I feel like this is Zero talking to me, right? I feel like this is the game talking to me directly about, like, the... I guess the message of this timeline. Isn't that the way an animal thinks, though? Don't get me wrong, I see the logic, but it's kind of... animal logic. Still, you made your bed. Now you've got a lie in it. If you're gonna be an animal, be an animal. Own it. 
The losers, the weak, throw them away. That's how nature works, my friends. That's life at its most pure. You get me? Now come on, hurry up and... It seems the door is finished opening. The real question is, are Temyoji and Kei gonna come in for the kill? The number 9 door has been opened. It will remain open for 9 seconds. Well, stay if you want. No skin off my back. Anyway, I'm out. Peace. Wait! Darn it, Dio! Temyoji left forward. Here we go. Dio fake left, then dashed right, slipping around Temyoji, and through the door. Now the question is, will Fi and Sigma be as lucky? Three, two, one, zero. The number nine door is closing. Did we not make it through? What? Fi didn't either? Let's go, Sigma. But... Shut up! Just do it! I looked at her, slightly confused. But before I could respond, her hand closed around my arm like a vice, and she hauled me bodily, bodily through the open door. Got a lot of strength then. Sigma's a big boy. Oh, so is the gameplay continuing beyond the door? This could be huge, guys. Wow, so this is the other side of the number nine door. I'm surprised they show it to us in presumably what isn't the true ending. The number nine door has closed. This ends the nonary game. Thank you for your participation. Sigma! Phi! Dio! Open up! Open this door! <clears throat> Temyoji's voiced... Voiced... Why do they keep spelling voice as voiced? Anyways, Temyoji's voice was muffled by the thick steel, but I could still hear the desperation and anger. That's... that's gotta hurt. I tried to ignore it, but no, nah, that, that pulls on my heartstrings. What is this, an elevator of some sort? We're actually being treated to seeing what's on the other side of the number 9 door. This is pretty incredible. Were we underground? We must have been, right? I guess it makes sense if you consider, you know, the outside world might be some post-apocalyptic scenario. And now this door is opening. Presumably to the outside world? Are we going to like what we're greeted with? Alrighty then. Here we are. Is that a hallway? Only one way to find out. <clears throat> Just as Fi had guessed, on the other side of the door was a wide hallway. Unfortunately, it seemed to stop in a dead end. It took only a second to find a familiar looking door on the left side of the hallway. <clears throat> we opened it and stepped inside. A familiar looking door? A familiar looking door and stepped inside. What could be a familiar looking door? Did it look like the number 9 door? Or is it maybe an elevator from one of the other floors? Oh no, it's the PEC room! Oh. This must be the prep room. So, the question is, is this the same PEC room from a couple floors below, or is it a PEC room necessary to go into the outside world, potentially with Rampant, Radical 6, or Radiation, or whatever it may be? I think I searched this place with Dio and Luna. Well, this is probably just another one that looks like it. You really think you would have been able to get to something on the other side of the number 9 door? 
Hold up. You know about the one on floor B too? Yeah. I visited it with Tenmyoji when we were looking for Quark. Huh. So you know that the pressure in here is a lot higher than the pressure outside? What? Oh, you didn't? What are you talking about? <laughs> Didn't I just say what I'm talking about? The air inside this facility is kept at a higher pressure than the air outside. Oh, interesting. So, if that's the case, that would only make sense under the presumption that there's some airborne threat on the outside of the facility, so that when doors are opened or any sort of access is given to the facility, air only flows out from the facility, not into it from the outside. So that would make me think then that, well, I mean, even at least when first designed and constructed, this facility was meant to be a safe haven from presumably Radical Six on the outside world. <laughs> Apparently, they're doing it to keep the virus from getting in. I should have just waited for Fi to explain it. <laughs> If you're leaving, you have to lower the pressure until it matches what's outside. This room is where you'd prepare for all of that. See those suits over on the wall? They keep you from getting infected or infected once you're outside. You have to put one on before you can go into the pressure exchange chamber downstairs. How do you know all that? Luna told me. So this furthers the idea that Luna is, again, from this, you know, more apocalyptic world where Radical Six is ravaging the world. She's also familiar with medical technology that wasn't apparent, at least in, you know, Sigma's time. So Luna is almost certainly one of, you know, the people that was not in a cryogenic state. Really? Wait, why did Luna know all that? Apparently it was all in a manual she found in a room we searched. So, the question here is, one, did I just overlook into something that's easily explained by she found a manual and read it? <laughs> or, do we buy this, right? Do we think that Luna's maybe lying about this, and actually knows more than she is letting on, right? Is she using this manual as an excuse to not provide any or to not allow any more insight into Luna's, I guess, life experience prior to the Nonary game? Hmm. Whoa, whoa, wait, go back. You said there's some kind of mysterious virus out there? Well, I wouldn't say it's mysterious. I think it's that Radical Six thing Alice was talking about. Don't quote me on that, though. That sounds... bad. Yeah, I agree. Well, we've come this far, we can't turn back now. Let's get those suits on and head outside. No argument here. Let's do it. Okay. I, I think it's really cool that the gameplay is continuing. I, and again, I can't help but think that this isn't the true ending, right? This is going to be a game over of some sort. Really, I'm wondering, in almost a sort of final destination manner, like, what exactly is going to go wrong that's going to lead to our death? Or this being a game over? But at the same time, what can we glean from this ending, this information from beyond the number 9 door, that can influence our actions in other timelines before we leave the number 9 door, right? We climbed in the protective suits in silence, then headed down to the pressure exchange chamber. Which is, I guess, why it's called PEC, right? This is exciting, though. With a quiet hum, the process began. I could hear the soft hiss of air leaving even through my helmet. There was nothing to do until it finished, but wait. Then, out of nowhere, Dio spoke up. I never thought I'd succeed so easily. So, 
So there are a lot of things to consider right now. <clears throat> so, Dio, success in what regard, right? Did he have ulterior motives? And he almost certainly does. He has other goals. He's being commanded by somebody to come to the notary game and do something in particular. So it's not just a matter of, you know, succeed easily in terms of escaping through the number nine door, but so much as accomplishing what those other things. Are we about to find out what some of those other things are? And the second thing is, Sigma's mentioned right now, it took me a moment to realize his voice is coming from the speaker in my helmet. Did Dio hop in the suit with the rest of them? Is that how they communicate while they're in these suits? If so, great. If not, maybe he's, you know, in some other control room or something and Phi and Sigma have walked into a trap. Apparently the radio was designed to activate automatically. You mean getting out of here? Yeah. No, you're thinking too small. Yep, here we go. We're going to get some insight into Dio's other motives. He clearly knew more about this world and the nonary game, I guess. Hmm. I guess I can tell you who I really am. <gasps> oh boy, this is, this is exciting. This is incredibly exciting. I know you're all like checking the timestamps to be like, he couldn't possibly leave a cliffhanger here, right? <laughs> don't worry guys, don't worry. No cliffhangers. I'm trying to think though, real quick. He's taking orders from somebody. What do we know thus far, right? He's taking orders from somebody. He killed the old woman in order to gain the bracelet to play the nonary game. And via the nonary game, well, made it through the number nine door. That's the easy, you know, low hanging fruit version of success. I think the alternative is there was somebody or some people within the nonary game that he needed to make sure were dead. And by leaving with just the few of us, he has ensured that all of them are dead. What? You see, the thing is, I'm a hero. You don't say. You watch my channel too, Dio? Alright, alright. You know, going up a little bit of my tier list. <laughs> I was sent here from far away to save mankind. From Radical Six somehow? If so, then why did you... He's from the future. I bet he's from the future and knows the results of whatever genetic engineering research was being done or whatever the results of the notary game are, or what somebody who's in the notary game does after they survive the notary game and ensures they don't make it out. Something like that, I think. That would be my bet. What? Too surprised to speak? Uh, Dio? I think maybe you should calm down a bit. We're all excited to be getting out of here, but... Never mind, you're clearly too small-minded to understand. We were still going back and forth when the quiet hiss of air escaping slowed and stopped. The door at the end of the room slowly ground open. I mean, you can offer something that broad, but if your explanation is just, I'm from far away here to save mankind, you know, the natural follow-ups are, save mankind from what? Where did you come from? You would think that that would be basic information to follow up with, right? We walked through to find ourselves in a nearly identical room. Uh oh, the music stopped. After two more decompressions, the last door finally opened. The music stopped, guys. You know what that means. We're about to get a pretty grim sight. I stepped outside and gasped. A dark landscape like none I'd ever seen lay spread out before me. I couldn't help but stare. What? what the heck? Looks like a desert. I can see that. The question is, which desert? I don't know. I can tell you what day it is, though. Huh? Look. 
The moon's red, see? This must be a total lunar eclipse. Which is something we read about in the lounge, right? Oh yeah, I remembered you talking about that in the lounge. During a total lunar eclipse, the moon is entirely covered by the Earth's shadow. That doesn't mean the moon just disappears or turns black, though. It actually reflects light that's passed through the Earth's atmosphere. But this makes it appear to be red. Essentially what's happening is that the moon is reflecting the sunset. I wonder if that is... I mean... I wonder how essential that is to the Nonary game. That the Nonary game takes place on this specific day, right? This total lunar eclipse. Is that relevant to the morphogenetic field and such? Do you remember when the next total lunar eclipse was going to happen? Yeah, December 31st this year, so New Year's Eve. That's what the magazine said, at least. Which is interesting, right? Because supposedly there's people who have been in, you know, cryogenic state for however long, and it seems like a few people are at least from much further along in the future. But this would only be less than a week from when Sigma was actually abducted. Hmm. Well, there you go. So today is December 31st. Wait, crap, if I got grabbed Christmas morning, then that means I've been here six days? Looks like it. We should get to the nearest town. Okay, and where would that be? There has to be one around somewhere. There's no way that the Earth changed this much over the course of a week, right? Granted, I mean, they could truly be in some random desert, and that's why the landscape could look so barren in so many directions, in every direction, rather. And it's not like the, the entire Earth is this exact landscape. So maybe it is still just, you know, a regular Earth, but it's odd to think that literally on December 25th, when Sigma was abducted, Radical Six didn't exist in his world. It wasn't this rampant thing. And over the course of five or six days, he was abducted, put in a cryogenic state prior to the Nonary game starting on December 31st, and they already have this facility that exists, has all this equipment, etc., with people that are from a world that knows, or that has, you know, Radical Six rampantly, uh, you know, spreading throughout the world. Like, it's still not quite coming together. <laughs> Even deserts have some towns, whether they're in the Mojave, uh, Sahara, or Gobi. That's not what I'm worried about, though. What are you worried about? Forget it. Doesn't matter right now. Yeah, I would be more curious, when's the next Blood Moon after December 31st? Oh, come on! Tell me! I'm curious now. Impossible as it might seem, I could have sworn I heard her frown. I'm worried about whether or not there are any survivors. If Alice was right about the virus, are you saying humankind might be extinct? What the heck? And yeah, could that really take place over the course of a few days from one virus? No way! That's impossible! A whole species can't just die out in six days, that's... I hope it's not the case, of course, but there's the possibility. Whatever, we should get moving. There's still four people stuck in there, including Quar. We need to find help and come back for them. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, what was it? Um, there's a movie, it's like from the Clover... Cloverfield series? 
It's the second one, though, where the, the main character's in an underground bunker. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. If so, it's really good. Um, I, I highly encourage it. It's de definitely got an unsettling vibe. Uh, but this, this very much reminded me of that. Okay. It's like an address. It's like something Cloverfield Way or whatever. But I turned to take a step. There was a rough crackle over the radio and the sound of someone falling. I turned back around to see Fi on the ground. Did Dio attack him? Or her? Hey! Are you alright? What happened? I ran over and helped lift her back up. She fumbled for a second, then clambered to her feet. Where... Where are we? Her voice was low and rough. Huh? Ah, I see. Hmm. Wait, did she just like regain her memories or something? What? What's going on? This timeline. Her consciousness actually just jumped timelines. Timeline? She didn't respond. I was about to begin a more irate line of questioning when she suddenly grabbed me by the shoulders. Hey! Where's Dio? D Dio? Oh yeah, I haven't seen him since we got out. I'm sure he was with us when we left. Crap. We need to split up and find him. Why? Because he needs to tell me something. This is crazy, this is Fi from another timeline. And clearly Dio has a lot to tell us. Why are you asking me this? What? Don't tell me you forgot. Wait, maybe not. He must not have made this jump. This is so crazy. I love this stuff, though. She wasn't making any sense. Darn it. Look, forget about that. Just find Dio. I'm going over to that hill, so you take the other direction. Yeah, I guess Dio really did just split from the rest of the party. Dio definitely has something in mind. Uh, okay? But she'd already taken off without waiting for my answer. I watched her for a few moments, confused, before turning and heading off to look for Dio myself. Darn. Don't see him anywhere. Where the heck did that guy go? I was looking around, trying to decide where to go next, when I heard them. Interesting, so Fi and Dio are probably going to have some sort of showdown. Also, something that came to mind is, did Fi intentionally jump to this timeline with the consciousness of another timeline? And if so, how? Because that's incredibly important, right? At the moment, we're just having occasional premonitions from other timelines, utilizing that information to progress in certain timelines, change our decisions, etc. But if Fi has found a way to identify certain timelines, maybe from premonitions or memories or whatever it is, and then intentionally go to those timelines to alter them, that would be incredibly powerful. <clears throat> the signal must have degraded, but I could still make out a few words. <clears throat> hey, heck are you... Dio. Their voices were cutting in and out, but... I'd heard that last word clear as day. Dio. Sounded like Fi had found him. I spun around and took off in her direction. Even if only to clear up the radio. That something transmitter? Transmitter? I see. Phone... Something ohm? <laughs> E.T. phone ohm? Something genome? What? Bet free something souls anxious blank from you. Probably anxious to hear from you. Or, yeah, probably to hear from you. But the question is, free something soul? Huh, it's maybe like freedom soul or something like that. What? Yes, Heck do you... <laughs> Dio's like, wait, how do you know about that? <clears throat> I'm so... 
Huh. This is incredibly informative. <laughs> Fine says, I know everything about you. I know your blank Madons, and obviously that's gonna be Myrmidons, which is the word that we saw on the blade of that knife. Which means we can probably tie that knife to Dio, which is not something we had already, you know, it's not that revolutionary, but things are getting, you know, more confirmed at least. The transmission was getting clearer. I had to be getting closer. Never mind that. I want to ask you something. What's the password for the number zero? What's the password for the number zero? The number zero computer? Number zero door? Number zero? It's probably... Actually, no. I, I, I will say... You can try to fill in the gaps from the English here, right? Blank the heck, blank you, man. And maybe you'd say, like, who the heck are you, man? But I will say the Japanese voice acting has been really helpful, too. I am no man. How the heck can you crack jokes right now? You haven't given me my answer. What's the deactivation code? Oh. What's the deactivation code for the bombs? Did Dio set the bombs? I mean, I guess this is five from a timeline where she has found out that Dio knows the deactivation code to the bombs, right? Or is at least connected to them. So this basically confirms for us, our naive brains, <laughs> that Dio is the one setting the bombs, or at the very least knows the code. Hey, what are you... Stop! Uh-oh. Sigma, you've got to get there fast. Crap. That didn't sound good. I sped up and quickly crested the hill in front of me. There they were. Don't tell me Phi is dead. <gasps> Stop! I went down the hill as fast as I could, half running, half sliding. With the suits on, I couldn't tell who was who. But I had to stop them. I think we were too late. I clambered to my feet, slightly winded from my ordeal. The suited figure I'd slammed against lay on the ground next to the other one. <gasps> we did make it! This is, uh, they, I mean, this is an anime game, kind of, right? I moved over to peer through the visor. Given the height difference, it's probably Dio, right? Dio. Wait, what? Oh, or no, wait. <laughs> I was gonna say, Dio was on the ground? Does that mean Phi was hitting Dio? No, but this is the person that Sigma slammed. His eyes were closed, almost like he was just sleeping. My tackle must have knocked him out. I mean, this is Sigma we're talking about. He's, he's a pretty buff boy. Thanks. That was a close one. No sweat. What's this transmitter you were talking about? You heard, huh? Yeah. Well, it's right over there. See that briefcase looking thing? Did Dio take a transmitter outside and was planning on blowing up the place? Maybe that's the plan. Oh no. So he was trying to use that to get in touch with somebody. Huh, do I recognize that from somewhere? Where the heck did he get it? Probably had it hidden somewhere. Wait, hidden? Are you saying Dio's been here before? Yeah, probably. My guess is he came here, hid the transmitter, and then snuck into the building. Snuck in. I wasn't quite sure what to make of that, so I decided to take a closer look at the transmitter. There was a screen on the upper part with a bunch of numbers that looked, well, like nothing. What the heck is this? 78153-61098-83809-42419-90551? I... don't think I'm supposed to really make much sense of that. 
Is that some kind of phone number? No, it's too long for that. All I can think of is it might be like the deactivation code for the different bombs. It's 25 digits. What is it then? 25 digits. Hmm. Don't know. I assume it's some kind of code, but I don't see a key to decode it with. Memento Mori is 7, plus 4, 11. If the would add another 5, 16. Ninth would be another 6, or 22. And then Lion, 8, the Sun would be an extra 13. So that would put us at 35, I think. Hmm. I heard an odd crackling noise in my helmet. It took me a moment to realize it was a voice. Dio's voice. <laughs> What's so funny? Sorry. You guys just had it so backwards I couldn't help myself. You can't find the key to decode it? Well, no crap. The key is right in front of your face. What? That's the key. The message is somewhere else. You need those 25 numbers to decode it. Huh. That is interesting. That's very interesting. Where else could the message be? Uh, I can't help but think of just Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. But again, we've already established that's um, much more than 25 numbers. None of what he was saying made any sense to me. The other thing is, I mean, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. 25 is kind of close. Could we make use of that? Was there some string of numbers? I don't know. The only set of numbers that's coming to mind again is 016 on Clover's leg in that timeline. Hmm. None of what he was saying made any sense to me. Dio, what's going on here? Who are you trying to call with this thing? What, you don't know? At least one of you is appropriately ignorant. Interesting. Just even using the term appropriately ignorant is something you can dive so deep into, right? Dio has some impression of what the other people should know. And so maybe he's not aware of the phenomenon of jumping between timelines. Fine. Whatever. Might as well tell you. Here we go. I don't really have any reason to hide my identity now that my mission's a success. Besides, she'll probably tell you if I don't. Yeah, it seems like Fi already knows. Might as well hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm so excited. Dio shifted to put his hands behind his head, but didn't bother to get up. I belong to an organization called the Myrmidons. You've probably never heard of it. But there might be a few people out there who have heard of Free the Soul. If you haven't, well, it's a sacred religious order with over a million true believers. What? The Myrmidons are the hand of Free the Soul. We do what needs to be done to bring us closer to the new world Free the Soul promises. Of course, there's some, like, religious cult. <laughs> there's some people who might call us terrorists. Then again, from their point of view, I suppose we might be. We're trying to tear down the corrupt world they've built, after all. But when the sun dawns for the first time on our new world, we'll be hailed as saints, holy messengers who cleanse the filth from a dying planet. Well, only a handful of people will really become saints. Not even all of the Myrmidons will be guaranteed sainthood. First, you have to be raised with the teachings of Free the Soul from birth. Then you have to be chosen to join the ranks of the elite, and achieve great things. 
Returning from this mission would secure my position. This is so interesting, right? Free the Soul is built around the teachings of a man named Brother, who founded our order many years ago. I mean, I will say that even though the number million sounds impressive, in the grand scheme of things, you know, a population of over 7 billion, not 7 billion, right? Is it 7 billion? Yeah, I think it's 7 billion. Um, 1 million is really not that much, but at the same time, I feel like it would be on the order of something I'd have heard about if I were Sigma, right? His teachings are too profound for ordinary people to understand, but you could say that the core ideas of his doctrine are to separate oneself from worldliness, to destroy greed, and to divorce the soul from the body to cleanse it. Those who follow his teachings with discipline and devotion will be reborn as a new form of human. Only this new species will be able to live in equality, in a world without war or starvation. This sounds so cult-like. Brother was born into a poor family. I've been told he didn't know his father, and that he lost his mother at a young age. The only family he had was his younger brother, a boy named Left. Left? Hmm? That's a pretty odd name. I mean, not to mention brother, right? These have to be some sort of code name. They say brother had a special power, and that he was able to touch the thoughts of other people and see into them. It left him constantly exposed to the filthy greed of mankind. When Brother was 16, Left was found dead. His body was covered in bruises, but the police only made a cursory investigation, and quickly ruled his death a suicide. Later, Brother would find out that the killer had paid the police a massive bribe to keep the truth hidden. He burned with rage, but also found himself immersed in cold despair. Eventually, he received a divine revelation. Mankind was thoroughly corrupted by greed. They had to be purified and a new world created. God had given Brother his mission. That was when he began to teach others the truth. And at the age of 26, he started Free the Soul. Once Free the Soul was established, he devoted his resources to research on human cloning so that he could create the new species he'd foretold. He abducted, I mean, he invited to assist him a team of scientists from a research facility in the United States. And a year later, the first 10 new humans were born. Interesting, is K one such human? Those 10 were the first generation of Myrmidons. Incidentally, I'm from the fourth generation. So this has to be taking place far in the future, right? There's no way this is taking place, you know, between the five or six days between Sigma's abduction and then you know, December 31st, 2028, right? If... Yeah, I mean, if those were the first 10 Myrmidons and there are now a million, that's not something that took place over the course of five days, right? So Dio must be from the future or a significant amount of time has taken place between, you know, the upcoming Blue Moon, which would have been December 31st, 2028, and the one that, come, that comes after that. Especially if Dio is fourth generation, right? Those ten were the first generation of Myrmidons. Incidentally, I'm from the fourth generation. Our DNA comes from left, brother's younger brother. That means that we all share a face. And we are all given the same name, left. Some people think that's weird, but individuality seems much weirder to me. That does definitely seem weirder. If everyone looks the same, there's no such thing as race or even individuality. Now the real question is, are we gonna are we gonna take off K's mask and he's gonna look just like Dio? With cloning, you don't even need different genders. How could you get more equal than that? Still, there's a little random deviation, and other factors can influence a clone's development. I was the best of my generation, so I was chosen to lead the Myrmidons. I was probably sent here because Brother noticed the caliber of my skills. My mission was to infiltrate this facility. When I was given my orders, I thought this was going to be my chance. Why was he instructed to infiltrate the facility though, right? Why was what was happening in the Nonary game problematic for Brother in this religious order? In all my life, I've only ever once been punished for breaking our laws. It had to do with women. <laughs> I'd come in contact with someone unclean, 
and I was considered corrupted. Even if I was punished harshly and purified my soul, my dishonor remained. I wanted to prove my loyalty to brother, so I was determined to be successful on this mission, no matter what. My entire purpose is to be part of the foundation of Brother's New World. Now that I fulfilled that purpose, for the first time in my life I understand what true happiness is. Oh Holy Father, Holy Brother, Holy Master, <laughs> this is so weird. My sacred mission is at last complete. With these two hands, mankind is saved. From what? How does this, how is this salvation? I am your will made flesh. In your name, I give thanks. His voice had taken on an almost reverent tone, and as he finished speaking, he made some sort of odd sign over his chest. I wonder if this is an interesting commentary on, you know, some religions that currently exist. But it's also so striking, the contrast between Dio's character right now and that that was taking place inside the Nonary game. I wonder why he was so intent on, I guess, having some degree of individuality, some personality, while he was in the Nonary game. Was it all fake? Or was it real? Does every single Dio, every single Left, right, that's a descendant of Left's DNA cloned from him, have that same personality? If K is another left, another Dio, then almost certainly not, right? So why did Dio take on that personality in the Nonary game? Fai shoved his hands away. I don't care about your darn mission. You did this to us. Now we're going to... to... She grabbed the rock he held over her only minutes ago and lifted it over her head. Uh, Fi? What are you... Shut up. You still haven't answered my question. I'm going to ask you one more time. What is the password for the number zero bomb? The number zero bomb. Interesting, because we found two of the bombs, right? The number one and the number three bomb. The bomb... Darn it. Did I tell you to shut up? Now, tell me. What's the password? She swung the rock down toward Dio's head. He's probably going to stop at the last second. Wait. Okay, okay. Fine. It's not going to do you any good, though. I completed my mission. What are you going to do with the password at this point? Not your problem, just give it to me. This is so interesting to think that Fi's doing this to potentially save other timelines, right? Maybe even this one. Otherwise... Or maybe she's coming from a particular timeline that it's so painful that it's potentially, you know, leading to her and other loved ones' demise that she's come all this way to figure out this password to save that specific timeline. Fine. No skin off my back. The password for the Zero Bomb is... L-X-A-Q-N-S-G-D-Q. If I toss the rock off to the side, nine characters... You heard that, right, Sigma? Huh? The password. I'm going to try my best to remember it, but I won't know if I manage to until after I make the jump. There's a chance I won't remember anything. So you need to memorize it, just in case. Got it? I had absolutely no idea what she was talking about, but I was beginning to understand that it was probably pretty important. LXAQNSGDQ, I think? With that in mind, I repeated the strange series of letters over and over in my head, doing my best to memorize them. 
LXAQ and SGDQ. LXAQ and SGDQ. Nice. Okay, we're done with you. So the next question is, that's nine characters. It makes me think that it's for the computer. I mean, it mentioned the zero bomb, right? But those nine characters make it so tempting to use for that one computer. Let's go. Go where? Not sure, but I think he does. Get up. Yeah, Dio has some semblance of, or I mean, Dio snuck into this facility, right? He must know where everything else is outside of it. If I grab Dio's arm and hauled him to his feet. He jerked his arm away petulantly and began to walk. Is there a city near here? Yeah. Well, not really a city, I guess. More like a shelter. Some people who survived the disaster live there. Disaster? What disaster? Just shut up and follow me. You can see for yourself. Oh boy. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I looked up. It must have been a clear night, because there were more stars than I'd ever seen before. I thought I could even see the band of the Milky Way. Just goes to show, I mean, this is like a subtle way of indicating there's so little light pollution because there's so little, you know, presence of humans on, on Earth at the moment. And in the middle of that field of stars shone the full moon. A giant red orb looming in the center of the sky. Had it always been so big? It's a good question. Hmm. Does the lunar eclipse refer to, or does the line eating the sun refer to the lunar eclipse? What are we being treated to now? This is some special ending, I guess. Alright, I'll be quiet. Let's experience it together, I guess. Wait, there are credits? Wait, what? <laughs> this is certainly not what I expected. Credits? Excuse me? So... So clearly this isn't like the true ending, the full ending. We still have so many mysteries to figure out. There's no way this is the best ending either. Clearly, Phi wanted to save other timelines, but this must be one of the primary endings, I guess. I'm shocked that it was hidden behind two betrayals, right? Maybe that's intentional, game design-wise, to prevent... to make it less likely that new players will get this ending as their first ending. Because you have to betray Luna and then betray Clover in order to get here. And I don't think that's a very likely decision people will make on their first playthroughs. So, we gained some very useful information that would be helpful in other timelines, no doubt. But yeah, there's got to be a better result. I This does not feel like the true ending. But this is definitely a main ending. Wow. I don't know what to say. I usually save like all my thoughts on the game and stuff. For, for the endings, right? For the credits, I give my thoughts on the game and all that stuff, but... The game's not over. We still have, like, roughly... We still have more than a third of the game left. This is only the second of three main branches in the flowchart. We still have a full branch to explore. And in all the timelines we've already explored, there are locks, right? So there's more to explore in the timelines we have already given a go. So there's still a lot to explore here. A lot of mysteries to solve. But we did get a lot of insight in this timeline. Dio being a Myrmidon, the, I guess, one of his generation, right? The top of his fourth generation of Myrmidons. A religious cult dedicated to creating a new humanity, founded on equality, accomplished via cloning. Obviously that, you know, clicks with the background we got from Kay about the researcher and the old woman, the genetic engineering they were doing. It's probably the team of U.S. researchers that were abducted to help out. Um, but this is this is the Dio end, I guess. Wow. 
what an exciting timeline. <laughs> really, really, what an exciting timeline. But yeah, we still have to figure out a whole bunch of stuff. So this information probably unlocks quite a bit. Oh, wait, so there, there are like nine main endings. Wow. So let's look at the flowchart here. So there is another little timeline here, and we still haven't unlocked any new things from like what we've already talked about. Or the other timelines, they're still locked. But we gained a lot of information that's probably going to be incredibly helpful in this main branch in the middle. So I guess in the next episode, we'll explore what happens if we pick Ally. It's probably a more grim fate than the timeline we explored this time around. And then I guess we'll go way back to the beginning, the very first chromatic door, and see what happens when we choose differently. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really did. It was really cool to get to see the outside world. I'm, I love that the gameplay continued beyond the number nine door. And we finally learned about Dio. Dio was such a mysterious character, doing so much and playing such an integral role in all of these timelines, and we finally can understand his motive. We can finally understand who he is, and we can finally start to connect him to some of the other characters in the Nonary game. And now we can start to piece things together. So, whew, what a loaded one. What a fun one, though. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one just as much as I am. Wow, I, I, definitely, I definitely didn't see a religious cult coming. But, uh, but yeah, until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.